Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this morning's demo. Uh, we will be looking at deploying a multi-tiered web application with a combination of Red Hat Satellite 6, Red Hat Platforms, Red Hat OpenStack Platform, and Red Hat Ansible Tower. Um, we will be talking about a multi-tiered web application deployment. A multi-tiered web application, probably um, a familiar concept for everybody who's in the, who's, who's watching this demo. But for those who are not familiar with the concept, uh, usually it is an application that consists of multiple um, servers that uh, work together to provide a service to um, people inside or outside of your organization. Um, most common um, form of multi-tiered web application would be a load balancer that balances traffic over multiple web servers that in turn uh, use a single database or multiple database servers to get their information from. Now, usually, uh, deploying applications like this is a fairly labor intensive um, job if you need to do this by hand, because you not, not only need to deploy each individual node, but you also need to take care of uh, distributing information about those nodes to the other nodes. So as an example, you would need to teach the load balancer where the web servers are, you know, in order for the load balancer to be able to distribute traffic over the load balancers. And in turn, you would need to teach the web servers where the database server is in order for the web servers to be able to fire off their database queries to the database. And you would need to teach the database what the web servers are, so the database actually allows those connections from the data, from the web servers. So this is all um, usual, also all used to be a, a manual process uh, with relatively long wait times between the deployment of the various components and a fairly long wait time uh, for the requester of this multi-tiered application as a whole. So what I want to show today is a completely automated way of doing this using uh, CloudForms, OpenStack, Satellite 6, and Ansible Tower. And um, that workflow would look something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to initiate the actual provisioning through the CloudForms self-service portal. Uh, CloudForms will then connect to OpenStack for us and spin up four servers. Those servers will register with Satellite 6 during their initial boot up. And then after that is done, that initial boot up and that initial uh, the, the initial configuration um, through Satellite 6 is done, CloudForms will pass over um, control to Ansible Tower to complete the final application deployment. But the reasoning why we do, do it this way is that um, for each point, self-service really speeds up getting the right resources to, right, to the right places in your organization. And by that, it speeds up time to market. It's as simple as that. Um, as an example, if you would, um, for example, your, your developers might want to request a new uh, instance of um, the development version of your application, getting all through self-service in a completely automated fashion uh, just puts that in their hands much faster and that makes you know, just better use of their time overall. Um, OpenStack, very, very um, suited to do scale-out workloads like web farms, which is why uh, we picked that in, in this case. Um, Satellite 6 is going to provide the central IT department with a way to keep track of open vulnerabilities and um, maintain through the Puppet component in Satellite 6 a steady basic operating system configuration. And then Ansible Tower will have complete and instant knowledge of that whole environment. So it will know where the web servers are and it will be able to tell the load balancer that and it will know where the web servers are and it will be, it will be able to tell the database server that for um, security reasons. And it will, able be, it, it will be able to tell the web servers where the database server is. So Ansible Tower is very well suited to deploy that whole multi-tiered web application. And um, I think it's demo time by now. So uh, let's switch over to the other tab and uh, let's get going from there. Demo time. So there we are. Uh, this is the login screen for the CloudForms uh, self-service portal. So we'll start off by logging in to the self-service portal with my own personal account. And we'll end up in uh, what we call the dashboard, uh, which is this. Um, you can see that I've tried this before. I have one request that has been approved and it has been deployed. So I had a service, but it has been removed in the meantime. No actual outstanding, outstanding services at this point. Um, if we then go to the service catalog, you can see that I can request two um, items from the store right now. One is the load balanced WordPress instance, and one is a, an Ansible playbook that I might want to run at that um, instance at some point. Uh, we'll look into deploying Ansible playbooks on a group of servers from CloudForms in a future demo. But for now, we will take a look at deploying 
the WordPress instance from CloudForms. So we enter um, this catalog item, and as you can see, um, there's a, a pretty big space to explain to your users uh, what they're actually ordering from this point. Um, if you would read this, it says that we will now be deploying an HA proxy server uh, with two Apache web servers behind it uh, with the latest version of WordPress, which is, a, as I speak, 4.6.1 um, that will be installed on the web servers. And there will be a single MariaDB database service behind it. Um, all of those VMs, all those instances will be running on um, Red Hat OpenStack, OpenStack Platform 9 on RHEL 7.2 and we'll be deploying the whole through a heat template. Only the load balancer will have a public IP address, so I'll show um, what it looks like later. Um, but for now, let's just fill in the fields and um, start off the automation. I'll be deploying in the admin tenant, admin tenant, and I'll be calling my app demo app for today. Um, if this stalls at some point, um, I, I'll give it a timeout of 16, 60 minutes. It's more than enough. I, I, I think we'll probably be done in about 10, but whatever. Um, we need to tell it what, what SSH key to use. Um, I've done this demo for Red Hat Forum in, in the Netherlands before, so I, my, my key is called Forum Demo Key. And we'll be deploying on um, an M1 smallish instance, which is uh, a custom flavor on OpenStack that is slightly larger than M1 Tiny and we will be deploying on RHEL 7.2. Now, CloudForms is um, capable of using something like a, a shopping cart mechanism. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding this to my shopping cart. You'll see that there's a small one here now in the shopping cart icon in the uh, top right corner of the screen. And that allows me to add more than one item, uh, order more than one item in one go. But for now, um, I'll just click the cart. You'll see that I have only one item in my cart right now and I can click order and that triggers the whole automation flow. So there we go. It says now my shopping cart has been ordered. So if I go to my requests, you should see this is now my current outstanding request. It is pending approval. Uh, we have an automated workflow in place that will auto approve this specific request for me. Um, there's no requirement for me to, to have a, a someone else approve this, but we can build that into CloudForms if you want. So someone else uh, would need to approve um, of your order. Um, if we click this, we should see that it probably has been already auto-approved in the meantime. As I said, it's been, it has been auto-approved. And at this point, um, it's probably nice to go to the admin interface in CloudForms and take a look at what is happening um, in, the, in the background. So let's go to the other tab. And there we are. We'll log in as admin this time. And we'll be able to see that if we look at the services requests page, that my current active request has a status creating stack, if you can follow me now. Creating stack is an indication from CloudForms that it's currently talking to OpenStack uh, to create um, the four instances I, knew I needed for my multi-tiered web application. So we can take a little bit uh, more detailed look at this as well. It says creating stack. We're provisioning load balance WordPress instance. And um, it's probably nice to go look at OpenStack at this point and see what is actually happening over there. So we we'll switch to another tab again. We go to OpenStack, we log into my tenant. And we go to the admin project. Now, obviously you shouldn't use the admin um, tenant in OpenStack to deploy your applications, but this is just a demo. Um, we go to the orchestration tab to stacks, and there you'll see um, here's my demo app. It's currently indicated as create complete. So most of the OpenStack work has already been done uh, by CloudForms. Uh, we can click it. We get some more information about the application as it is deployed. Um, as you can see on the left side of the screen, when I hover on top of these icons, you can see this is a database. It has been completed. Um, one web server has been completed. Here's the other web server. And this is the load balancer, which has a floating IP attached to it. To get a little bit more detail about these instances, we go to compute instances in the top menu of the screen. And you'll see that my four instances are listed here. And the only one that actually has a floating IP and floating IP means that it's um, available from the outside is my load balancer. So this is an IP, this is the IP that we'll be using later on to uh, to view the WordPress instance running. Um, already, um, 
OpenStack indicated that the creation of this stack was complete. So we can go back to our cloud forms real quick and see what we're seeing over there. So we'll switch back to the other tab. There we are. And CloudForms now says, I'm awaiting configuration by satellite. So um, OpenStack part is already done. So what I want to show real quickly here is that if I go to services, my services now, um, we can get a complete overview of what I have ordered uh, before. So this is my, my service. Uh, when I click this, I see that I have four VMs deployed as part of the service that together combine into four CPUs that are in use, four gigabytes of memory, 40 gigabytes of storage. So I get a complete overview of what this specific application uses in resources. And if I click one of the instances here, so let's take the load balancer, uh, we can see a lot of information about um, this virtual machine that, it also, that has already been gathered by CloudForms, for example, the internal, both the internal and the external IP addresses, uh, the owner, which is very useful for chargeback reasons. And for example, something like a retirement date, uh, which I haven't filled in right now, but I could do that in CloudForms and have CloudForms um, automatically retire the service um, after, for example, one month, if I would only need it for a short period of time. And this is a very important feature that, that helps you battle VM sprawl in your uh, infrastructure. Um, as you already saw before, um, CloudForms indicates that it's currently waiting for satellite. Uh, so let's go to satellite. I was actually already waiting for Ansible. So let's go to satellite real quick. Let's see what's going on there. So let's log into satellite. And we'll see that we have four hosts that are uh, deployed right now. Uh, they already reported in, so they already did their puppet stuff. Uh, they were all configured to deploy into a specific host group according to their role. So we have two web servers. We have one load balancer. We have one database server. And if we quick click the load balancer real quickly, you see we have uh, a lot of information about this server available here as well. Um, a part of that is in what, what host group it's a member of, uh, which defines what puppet classes will be applied to it. And you can see it has security around outstanding. So it's already connected to satellite and satellite knows that this server actually needs to be patched already. So as um, this went pretty quickly, let's move over to Ansible Tower real quick so we can actually uh, get a glimpse of what is happening over there. And I'll explain um, the workings of um, Tower after that. So log into that. Uh, we should see a running job right now, which is this one, um, job 150. That's the deployment of my multi-tier web app. Um, as you can see, there's already a lot of the Ansible job that has been completed. Um, currently, we're deploying the web server components. Um, we'll get back to the status of this specific job later. Let's go um, through what Ansible Tower is actually made up of first. Um, Ansible Tower, very simple web interface. We have a project, we have inventories, and we have job templates. Um, projects is where um, code comes into the application. So that is um, where, where you point Ansible to Ansible Tower, to your Git repositories, to um, import your, your playbooks. Inventories is um, where you tell uh, Ansible Tower what servers you have and what servers you want to run your, your playbooks on. Um, you can import those inventories from other applications. And in this case, we're connecting Tower to Satellite 6. And as you can see, these four servers are the exact same four servers we uh, saw earlier in uh, Satellite. So those are the, the servers that have been imported from Satellite. And um, that makes it a lot easier just to tell um, Tower that, um, you know, go import your service from somewhere else. And I don't want to have two places where I want to maintain an inventory or whatever. Uh, we can just tell Tower to connect to Satellite and uh, maintain our list of servers um, in Satellite only. And then job templates are the place where we connect um, the playbooks, the code to the servers the code needs to run on. So for this specific um, demo, I have a WordPress deployment forum um, playbook, which uses code from the WordPress and OpenStack um, project, uh, the main.yaml playbook to be exact. And it runs that on an inventory called WordPress forum demo. Um, the result of this of the execution of this job template is what we just saw earlier and job 150, uh, the WordPress deployment form um, playbook that I uh, showed you earlier. It has been finished, it has finished in the meantime, uh, successful. So you can see that there were a lot of jobs, Ansible jobs that were run in the meantime. 
uh, we have three different groups of servers we run um, jobs against. So we have the MariaDB host group, the Apache host group, and the HA proxy host group. And to switch back to, open, to, to satellite really quickly, uh, these are the exact host groups you can see in satellite when we switch over to satellite again. Um, the Apache host group, the HF proxy host group, the MariaDB host group, that is the exact three host groups we import from satellite as well into Ansible Tower. That is the same set of host groups that we see here. So each host group um, has a couple of member servers in there. So MariaDB only one, Apache server, the Apache host group has two um, servers in there and the HF proxy host group only one as well. And on those uh, member servers of those groups, we run a specific amount of tasks. So if we uh, we'll take a look at the server, what, what happened for MariaDB is we installed um, MySQL or MariaDB because this is RHEL 7. And we created a database in there and we configured that database to allow connections from the web server, etc. And then for the servers that were in the Apache host group, we installed Apache, we installed PHP, and we dropped the WordPress tarball into the right place and configured WordPress to talk to the MariaDB server um, that we deployed earlier. And then for a service in the HA proxy host group, we deployed HA proxy and we took the host names from the service in the Apache host groups and um, added those to the HA proxy configuration. So if you remember, um, there was only one server that had an external IP address in, uh, in OpenStack earlier. So let's take a look at what that was again. Switch back to OpenStack. We go to the compute tab and to my instances, and there should be the load balancer that has a floating IP. So we take this IP address, we copy it, switch over to another tab. Switch over to another tab, like I said. So there we are. So as you can see, um, this is the IP address I copied over earlier from OpenStack, and there is indeed a WordPress instance running behind it. So I can actually go and configure that for uh, let's call it demo app WordPress. Save me. That would be very very. Let's pop that for now. And um, no, we don't need to in index this, and we can just click install WordPress, and it will install WordPress on um, my database. I can log into this instance. As you can see, it's all it's all running. But WordPress has been installed successfully. Go away. And um, what I can show you to prove this is all being load balanced right now, I can go to port nine thousand on my load balancer to the stats directory and log in there as well. It's all configured by Ansible Tower, and you can see that I have um, an HA proxy dashboard here that tells me I have two backends, WordPress 1, WordPress 2, and they've both been used. So, um, and very recently, as a matter of fact. So this is a very brief demo of a deployment of a load balanced WordPress instance um, with an HA proxy server, two Apache servers, and a MariaDB server in the backend. Uh, it was all initiated through the self-service portal in CloudForms. And um, it all took, because that is what we can see in CloudForms as well, the whole deployment took, let's take a quick glance at this, uh, took just over seven minutes. So I think we did that pretty quickly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, join us next time for more demos around uh, the Red Hat management portfolio. Uh, for now, um, I'm Maxim Bergrant, and uh, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.